Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to walk you through my favorite call to actions for cold emailing. And this is just based on our experience, sending hundreds of thousands of emails, what we've seen working really well, what we haven't seen working, and a little bit my personal preferences, what I just like, like using. And some of these you can use out of the box, just like plug it in with your current templates. For the other ones, you might want to rework your template a little bit but these are going to help you increase your response rates if you do it well. So let's get started. Let's start with some like classic main ones. So jump on a call. So this is typical. You have your pitch and then later like, Hey, let's jump on a call. Uh, do you want to jump on a call? I would say this is right in the middle. It works, but it's overused. Most people like start with that. So it's a good starting point but there are some better ones. I'm just gonna leave it in the middle C tier right now. So same, same thing with sending a calendar link. This is like, a, I think like two ways to think about it. It will help you to be, to do less work because they just click a link and you don't have to send anything else, but also it would require a person that doesn't know anything about you to click on a link without talking to you first. You just like click it straight away. It does work, but I would say it's actually maybe even a little bit worse than jump record, but I'm going to leave it here because there are some even worse ones. So, but let's say just click a link. So this is hundred percent worse than sending a kind link. You just ask them to, Hey, click this link to see more, uh, click here to do it. So mostly if the person doesn't know about you, like I never click weird links. I don't know if you do, like nobody likes to click links. So if you can avoid it, don't send links in this first email, you can send it later. And there are some other ways of uh, asking if you can send links, like that's much better. So I would add it here. And same thing with deliverability. If you don't send links in your first email, your deliverability should be higher. So, but a broken link is actually interesting. Uh, I'm going to add it to C just because of the creativity. So what we did was we sent a very personalized email and the call to action was, Hey, I made this loom video that explains exactly how it works. Check it out. And if they click the loom link, it's actually broken. And then they will respond back. Hey, the link is broken. And then you actually do the video and send the correct link. So this way you can send links at scale, very relevant but you don't have to create them before the recipient actually responds and wants to see it. So this, I like the creativity. So I'm going to put it here. Uh, C. Okay. Would you be against? So this is getting better. This is what I like. Uh, and this is also from Alex from Mosi. So instead of asking, do you want to jump on a call? Like, no, not really. But if you ask, would you be against jumping on a call? Would you be against X? That's much better. Like I, I'm usually not against it if it makes sense to me. So it's definitely higher than just jumping on a call. Then even better is asking permission. So I got this from Charlie and I really like this. So this you can combine with pretty much all the other call to actions, but you ask permission first. So like, Hey, Alex, I know you get pitched a lot and I don't want to pitch you without knowing if you'd be up for it. So is it okay if I send you more information? Is it okay if I send you a link? Is it okay if I send you my current link? Is it okay if I send you a blog post? Just instead of being the pushy salesman in like shopping mall or like in the streets, it just comes up to you and starts selling you, pushing it down your throat. You're just taking a step back and you're putting them in charge and having them decide like if they want it. So is it okay if I send you a link? I don't want to pitch you without your permission. And if they say yes, then you send it. Okay, then choose AB. So let's say, Again, this is a little bit better than just jumping on a call. So instead of asking like, do you want to jump on a call? You give them like two options. Are you open Thursday or Friday at 2 PM? So this is more specific, more better. Uh, and it can be different kinds of, uh, it doesn't have to be a specific time. It can be whatever you want, but you just give them two answers. It can even be a, you want to jump on a call, B not interested right now. If you just give them options, you will get more responses and you give them like a super easy way to respond. So instead of asking like, when are you free? You give them uh, respond with a, 
if you're free on Friday, respond with P if you're free on Thursday. So I recommend trying that. So asking for intro is also, I like it. Uh, it's better than just like jumping a call. It uh, like works even if you're con uh, contacting the right person. But if you ask them like, hey, are you the right person in the company to talk about X or who should I contact? Uh, or, hey, can you forward me to the person in charge of X? Can you forward me to the person that can help me with X? So asking for an intro instead of pitching straight away, like super short email, you can maybe have like a line about what you do. But just asking for an intro, asking who's the right person in this company to talk about this. So again, better than just jumping a call. So sending a Loom video. Uh, I would say this is, again, like B, Maybe C, mm, let's put it B. I feel it's a little bit better than jumping a call. So again, this is like two ways. You can just tell them like you made a Loom video for them and can you send it over? That works really well. So instead of just jumping a call or sending your pricing page in text form, just add the Loom video in there with the call to actions and we'll get a little bit more responses. Uh, then sending an uh, X attachment I say this is like the worst one what, what you can do. And maybe like this goes with like every other attachments. We get this asked a lot from like institutes or can I attach something to my email? Like, no, we don't recommend it. Do you ever open attachment from the first email that you get? You can send attachments later when they're already interested. Like, hey, there's a PDF that explains what we do or can I send over a PDF that explains what we do? That's better, but attachments, especially like applications, don't do it, uh, drops your deliverability again. And then podcast invite. So this is S tier for sure. It takes a little bit more effort because you need to have a podcast or you want to make it seem like you have, but people will respond to this. And same, I will put it together with the research request. So this is a little bit easier than podcast. You don't have to have a podcast. But what you do is you re reach out and you tell them like, hey, I'm doing a research or I'm writing a blog post about X, the niche that you're going after. Would you be down to jump in a quick call? I want to ask a few questions. Later, I can like add your information and send you some traffic. So this works really well. Uh, we had a client with our agency where in three, four months, we got two, three responses using the main call to actions. It just didn't resonate, super saturated niche. Then we switched to the research request. Uh, are you willing to jump on a quick call? Uh, we're doing research, we're writing a blog post, we're writing a re research paper. Straight away, we got, I think, 16 responses in the first week when we tried it. So this is like, if there is a magic bullet, like this is it, but it requires you to do more work and you actually follow through with the blog post. Like, don't lie about it, actually do it. And I feel if uh, you put more effort into it, like it will work out better. That's why like the structure of the tier list uh, worked out like this as well. So I feel if you send 100 emails, you will get most responses with these. Then if you ask permission and combining it with other call to actions, and then the little bit better versions of the main jump the call ones, and then uh, all of these lower ones, we haven't had much success. This doesn't mean they don't work. Uh, there are some specific cases where they might be even better or like higher, but it's just, based on our experience, uh, what we've seen. So if you want to improve your response rates and you haven't tried some of these uh, call to actions, give them a go and let me know how it goes. Thanks. See ya.